concept that might be new to you is an AI impact assessment. And oftentimes people confuse an AI risk assessment with an AI impact assessment, but these are two distinct things. And this comes from clause 6.1.4. And a way to think about an AI impact assessment is what is the potential impact to individuals or groups because of use of AI in your product or service? And to help break this down a little bit, let me, let me give you a way that your organization might do this in practice. So maybe you will think about what is the product or service that I have? And then based on that product or service that leverages AI, what does it do? And then once you define what it does, you can ask the questions, well, how could that potentially impact individuals or groups in a negative way? And then you have to decide, well, how big a deal is that? Is that a really important impact? Is that a very likely impact on those individuals? And if you decide, yes, it is a high impact, it needs to be addressed, then you need to decide what can you do to help reduce the likelihood and the impact of that thing. So let me give you a concrete example. I'm going to return back to my law firm example. Let's say that you are an AI provider to law firms and you help them generate responses to cases. Well, you can say, all right, what is my product? My product helps lawyers be more efficient by generating research for them on case decisions that they can use in their practices. That's what it is. That's what it does. Well, how could that impact groups or individuals? Well, if I if it returns bad results, it could result into uh, bad conclusions in trial. It could result in people, uh, it could result in mistrials. It could result in people going to jail, their life being impacted, so on and so forth. So this is a very big impact. So I need to take that seriously. That's I need to mitigate this, these measures. Now, what can you actually do to reduce that impact? Well, maybe you could make sure you have really good data. Maybe you could do really good quality assurance on those results. Maybe you could communicate very clearly to those law firms so that they understand that they can't just take those results at face value. They need to validate them and imply their own interpretation. Maybe you can train the law firms on how to use that. Maybe you can choose huge samples of outputs to validate the results that are consistently accurate, so on and so forth. Those are things you could do to reduce that potential impact. So whatever it is that you do at your organization as a product or a service, you can take it through this same impact assessment methodology. And as you implement ISO 42001, you're going to have to have a policy on how you do this. You're going to have to have a process to consistently do it for all your products and all the new features that you bring, bring to the table in your products. You're going to have to have the personnel to actually do this impact assessment. And then you're going to have to have a process to escalate these issues that you identify to decision makers so they can decide what they're going to do about them. And that in principle is an AI impact assessment and an absolutely essential component of ISO 42001. So on the next session, what I want to cover in a little bit more detail is the internal audit clause. What is an AI internal audit and why does it matter? So I'm looking forward to it and I'll see you in the next session. Mm -hmm.